Hi everyone, in this lecture I want to talk a little bit about uh, Venetian painting and primarily focusing on 16th century Venetian painting. This is a very, very important development in the history of Western art, a uh, kind of alternative as it were to the Florentine uh, priority on disegno and the influence of uh, Leonardo, Raphael, and Michelangelo. So Venice is a very different uh, art center, with very different priorities from those of Florence. Um, or of Rome. We're going to focus primarily on the use of oil paint in Venice, uh, the focus on color and the appeal to the senses, the concept of colorito. We'll look a little bit at the idea of the pastoral in art and wrap up with a discussion of the contributions of Titian, particularly as he anticipates uh, some uh, stylistic trends that will uh, really become manifest in the Baroque. So um, let's begin with a view here of Giovanni Bellini's uh, really remarkable Sacra Conversazione uh, type of altarpiece in San Zaccaria, a church very, very close to uh, the Piazza San Marco in the heart of Venice. Uh, this altarpiece, which is dated 1505, is at the end of, uh, near the end, I should say, of Giovanni Bellini's very long life. He dies in 1516, probably in his late 80s, and really marks the culmination of a career of studying the effects of color and, um, and light, and really sets apart, I think, uh, the, the Venetian painting tradition from the uh, contributions of, of centers such as Florence and um, uh, Rome. So let's begin looking uh, at that altarpiece uh, in a little bit more detail. The altarpiece, as I've already mentioned, is of a Sacra Conversazione type, which is a very, very popular from, say, the middle of the 15th century uh, on until about, really, maybe the first decade or so of the 16th century. It, it begins to be replaced, as we'll see with the work of Titian, by a more dynamic vision of, of painting. But in Venice, it really uh, reaches a kind of peak of perfection, as it were, especially in this painting by Giovanni Bellini. Sacra Conversazione is a concept in Italian uh, uh, art, I guess would be the best way of talking about it, where a group of saints who may be very distant in time or place are gathered together around a sacred person or object or what have you and are simply meditating. And so there's no real narrative uh, uh, or action of any kind. Instead, the focus is more on a contemplative and meditative sort of emotional climate and and really much of the impact of the painting is going to be implied uh, rather than directly stated and uh, to a certain degree relies especially in Venetian art on the role of color so as we uh, zoom in just a little bit on the picture and we can begin to, to see this uh, in perhaps better detail as we go in just a little bit more you can see the degree to which Giovanni Bellini has very very uh, carefully reproduced and, and to a certain degree I think enhanced the effects of light and even soft light falling across the, um, the characters, their garments and of course the architectural setting this uh, uh, wonderful um, uh, apps that we see. Here. Let me actually see if I can pull out just a little bit so you can, you can kind of see where that's coming from. So you can see uh, that the figures are in a, a semicircular niche here that is covered by a, um, a half dome here with a mosaic decoration, again a very typical Venetian art form. So the sense of light is very, very strong and also, as I've uh, mentioned before, there's a very strong sense of color. So let's go look just a little bit more closely at that. For instance, in very rich blues and reds and greens of the garments of um, uh, what we take St. Catherine, for instance, here, or the ver blues of the Virgin Mary's robe, um, or even these wonderful yellows and oranges, these are made possible uh, um, through Venetian proximity uh, to trading routes. In fact, Venice itself is a great commercial center. And the proximity to sources of these pigments, uh, especially, for instance, rich blues, which are coming from places like Afghanistan, for instance, we see a, a lot less blue, for instance, the further west we move in Europe. It's very, very expensive. Um, there's also an, what 
I guess I would describe as a Venetian predilection for uh, developing the possibilities of color. And color can come uh, both in terms of hue but also in terms of effects of light and shade. And I think that uh, Giovanni Bellini is working in, in both ways. That is to say, we have rich saturated colors like we might see in the blue uh, area here, the Virgin's robe. But we also see an interesting interplay between light and shade that uh, seems to suffice in its own right as an object of contemplation. The other thing that's happening in here that sort of feeds into this as well is the sense of um, an absence of dependence on line, I guess is the best way of thinking of it right now. That is to say, form is defined not through linear uh, um, uh, strategies like we might expect to see in Botticelli, but instead works very much in a, a Leonard-esque, I suppose, uh, sort of way, almost like sfumato. The emphasis is developing uh, the figures, for instance, their three-dimensional uh, mass, uh, primarily through the, through the use of light and shade, instead of drawing lines to delineate the uh, sort of outer circumference, for instance, of St. Uh, Jerome. And the closer that we go into some, uh, uh, if we look, for instance, at St. Jerome, we would see, uh, let me just look in a little bit closer, the degree to which uh, Giovanni Bellini has created form entirely out of tone, that is to say, moving from light to dark. So the overall mood is one of, of, of great sort of stillness, a quiet contemplation of uh, the mystery, really, of the incarnation of Christ. It's a very moving and profound uh, piece and indicative, again, of the artist's powers, uh, even so late uh, in his life. And that, by the way, is also present, interestingly enough, in a very different type of painting, which is the uh, Feast of the Gods by Giovanni Bellini. And this is a striking uh, picture in many, many ways. Uh, it's really roughly contemporary with um, uh, the San Zaccaria altarpiece. It's finished later. The, the, the date traditionally given ranges between about 1510 and 1530 between Giovanni Bellini and his younger successor, Titian, working on this. As we look at the painting, it, it's important to remember that basically the lower band of figures and a small portion of the trees up above is the work of Giovanni Bellini. And then most of the landscape in the upper left sort of quarter of the picture is that of Titian. And this would have been updated uh, by Titian at the uh, request, I think, of Alfonso Deste to kind of bring this altarpiece more in line with other contributions by Titian, one of which we'll see, see shortly. Again, the first impression is one of, of rich, saturated color. You can see this most strikingly, of course, again, in the garments uh, of the participants in the scene. Again, a, a, a pagan mythological scene, uh, probably taken uh, from Ovid, and, and other sources are mixed into this, but the, the Roman poet Ovid uh, describing uh, a certain f a festival or, or feast uh, that happens is from his uh, book called the, F the Fasti, the, the essentially the, the parties, the celebrations. Um, and so there's this banquet of the gods, and the gods are resplendent in all kinds of richly uh, uh, hued garments of one kind or another. You can see some very subtle coloristic uh, tricks, for instance, in this if we look at uh, Mercury's robe here, you can see a, a beautiful kind of contrast between blues and reds. Uh, again, a m kind of multicolored effect. Um, again, rich blues, greens, reds. These are very expensive and difficult to work with pigments, and of course would be uh, uh, reserved really for a, a very aristocratic patron. As we move across uh, the scene, we can see uh, Giovanni Bellini's talent for creating uh, form with light and shade and also, uh, at the same time, his restraint in depicting his, pic uh, his figures here as they're drinking and having a great time. They're remarkably sober and, and still. The eroticism of uh, this vignette here on the right, which forms part of the really the major theme of the pictures, is strikingly uh, restrained and, and, and limited. Um, but nevertheless, again, for a very, very old man, uh, at this point in time, it's a remarkable uh, illustration of the degree to which he was able to move with the times and 
and uh, partake of this new interest in classical mythology. Again, as I've mentioned already, the upper landscape in the upper left m is much more dynamic, full of the forces of nature, uh, sense of movement, highlights of uh, the sun caught against dark, uh, towering crags, uh, feeling of movement in the trees and the, and the uh, clouds and what have you. This is really the work of, uh, of Titian and, and will provide a kind of interesting introduction to um, uh, uh, to his uh, his ideas in painting. So the Feast of the Gods and the San Zachariah altarpiece give us a sense in uh, these two pictures, a really clear sense of some emerging priorities in Phoenician painting. 